Soul, our star. Otherwise known as the sun, it's our source of light and one of the primary reasons that there is life on our planet. One of the many things that amazes me about astrophysics and astronomy is how much we know about stars and their life cycles. And today, I'd like to talk about what we know about our own. There are numerous different kinds of stars and their life cycles are affected primarily by their mass and their temperature. The most common stellar classification system the morgan keenan system uses the letters O, B, A, F, G, K, and M to classify main sequence stars. A main sequence star is one that's in its phase of nuclear fusion of hydrogen to helium. Most stars that we've observed, including our own, are in their main sequence. On a technical level, our star is a G2V star, indicating it is a main sequence star with a temperature of around 5,800 Kelvin. So, what will happen to the Sun once it completes its main sequence? Well, there's a few different things that can happen to a star after it burns away all of its hydrogen. This is primarily dependent on its mass. So first, let's discuss what happens to a star that's more massive than our own, because quite frankly, it's way cooler. Without the outward pressure generated by the hydrogen fusion to counteract the force of gravity, the core of the star contracts until either electron degeneracy pressure becomes sufficient to oppose gravity or the core becomes hot enough for helium fusion to begin. To explain that first option, if two electrons are in the same state, they need to have different spins or energies. Since electrons have two possible spins, changing the spins allows you to fit twice as many electrons, but this is not nearly enough room to fit all the electrons of a huge star collapsing in on itself. Thus, we must start placing higher energy electrons on top of each other, and in order to fit all the electrons, the energy becomes so high that they counteract the force of gravity pulling the star into collapse, causing it to maintain a state of hydrostatic equilibrium. So, when this happens to a massive star, it expands into a supergiant. These can be anywhere from 30 to in excess of 1000 times the radius of the sun, and tend to have a very short lifespan. When I say short, I mean in cosmic terms, between a few hundred thousand and 30 million years, roughly. During this time, they will burn heavier and heavier elements within their cores until they collapse into their next phase, a supernova explosion. Supernovae are particularly interesting to me because we've actually witnessed them before. Numerous times in human history, people have recorded observations that match a supernova appearing in the sky. The first was in the year 185, when Chinese astronomers saw the appearance of an extremely bright star in the sky that took months to fade away. This is now known as the SN185 supernova remnant. Second, in 1054, another was recorded by Chinese, Japanese, Arabic, Egyptian, and European astronomers. This became known as the Crab Nebula. A supernova occurs when electron degeneracy pressure is no longer able to support the star against the force of gravity, causing the core to undergo sudden catastrophic collapse. This also causes some of the energy and matter of the star to eject outwards in a bright flash of material, the gorgeous results of which we can see with a good telescope. The core of the star then becomes a neutron star, the smallest and densest stars known to exist. Around 10 kilometers in radius, no bigger than a large city, these stars also rotate extremely fast, between 1.5 milliseconds to several seconds. They also eject pulses of radiation from their poles, and they make a remarkable sound, though it isn't naturally detectable to human ears. When the frequency is shifted to make it audible, it sounds something like this. If a dying star is massive enough, it won't become a neutron star. It will instead collapse into a black hole. When this happens, the gravitational force is so strong that the compact mass deforms spacetime and creates a hole. Then we get a region of space from which nothing can escape, including light. Their intense mass and gravitational forces consume everything, creating a visible disk of matter called the accretion disk around it. Black holes are one of the most mysterious, and in my opinion, fascinating astronomical objects in the universe. However, Sol is not massive enough to become either a neutron star or a black hole. 
when it exhausts its supply of hydrogen to fuse, its core begins to contract due to gravity. This pulls in more hydrogen into a zone where the temperature is right to continue fusing hydrogen in a kind of outer shell around the core. This outer layer then begins to expand rapidly. As a red giant, approximately 5 billion years from now, the sun will grow so large that it will engulf Mercury, Venus, and probably Earth. Even if it doesn't, its extreme temperatures will be fatal to any life remaining on Earth at the time. It will then enter the horizontal branch phase, in which helium fusion will ignite in a helium flash over a period of days, releasing intense nuclear power on a scale of around 10 to the power of 8 times the luminosity of the current sun. Following this, it will gradually shrink in radius and increase its surface temperature. Eventually, there will be no more helium at the core to fuse, and a shell of fusing hydrogen and helium will continue around a hot core of carbon and oxygen. This is the asymptomatic giant branch, paralleling its evolution as a red giant, but with a shorter lifespan. Finally, when the fusion process can no longer continue, the sun will contract and cool into a white dwarf, a remnant of degenerate matter, and expel out the remaining matter into a planetary nebula. This is the end of the sun's life. The white dwarf will continue to contract and cool off until it no longer exists. The planetary nebula will spread and shift about among the galaxy, the right particles coming together over millions of years to produce new stars and new planets around them. The process then repeats, but the birth of a star is a lesson for another day. It is somewhat frightening to consider that one day, our star will die and we will be taken with it, should we still exist. However, to me, it simply highlights the fact that if we expect to outlive our solar system, we need to one day leave it. That's why space travel is such an important thing to me. It's key to our long-term survival as a species. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. If you want to support me further, consider donating on Patreon or purchasing some of my work through Amazon or Teespring. Thank you, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. Live there, on the mode of dust, suspended in a sunbeam, in a fast cosmic arena.